This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers Cable or Rogers TV. Welcome to Oxbridge Scoop Dog Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. Now, to start off the show, I pulled two cards to offer you some inspiration. So we're going to channel some messages to assist you with the energy for the week. So the very first card that I had pulled is the Ark of the Covenant. I'm not too sure if you're going to be able to see that. I'm going to hold it and see if we can zoom in, but I'm going to describe it to you anyways. So we have a coffin. Don't want that to sound morbid or anything, but we have a coffin there. And there is a fire. There are some people honoring, um, honoring the dead. So this actually has to do with what you are letting go of. You know, since you were in utero, in your biological mother's belly, you have been programmed, programmed with patterns. And these patterns of perception, these patterns of reactions, emotional reactions, thoughts that will ignite when you experience certain things have really shaped your reality. In some cases, you have taken on things through your DNA. You have possibly, depending on your belief systems, taken on things from your past lifetimes. And we are in the process of letting go, shedding some of those distortions of perceptions. So you're seeing things in a different light and you're stepping into the new. You are aligning to more of the core of who you are. The other card, it really relates exactly to this, and it's the lookout card. So we're going to try to zoom into that. And basically, there's a tall ship that is on fire, and that are, there's someone high up in the lookout looking towards where they're going. So as this old is burning away, we don't want to focus on those, uh, on the fear, on the anxiousness, the anxiety that can potentially be coming up for you in any given moment. Because when we focus on being afraid of making decisions, not knowing where we're going, is this going to work out? Am I okay? Am I safe? That's what you perpetuate is that type of energy. You keep drawing that into you. So, but your body is talking to you, right? When those fears come up, don't like push them down and push them away. Acknowledge it. Give yourself some nurturing. Take a moment to have some deep breaths. And if you know where that energy is residing in your body, then breathe into, let's say, your belly or breathe into your shoulders and let that go. And then zone in on you being a creator. Trust that you can create that. Okay, so moving on. Who do we have on the show? So we have uh, Cannington haunted attraction. We're talking about that. Michelle Herbert's going to be on the show. We also have Catherine Bird on the show, who is with me right here, right now, and she's going to be talking about Northern Roots Wellness. So stay tuned for that. And I'm also going to be doing my own segment on the show, talking about how comedy and comedy, laughter, and play can be so incredibly healing. And I'll give you a little bit about my story. And how it has helped to heal me. So we're going to have a fabulous show. Make sure you keep on watching. We'll be back with more on Oxford School Dog Life. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Welcome back to Uxbridge Scugog Life. In the house, I have Catherine Bird of Northern Roots Wellness. Welcome to the show. Thank you. 
So I have had the pleasure to get to know Catherine through my working at the Whitby Farmer's Market and the Uxbridge Farmer's Market. So you have some beautiful, holistic products, not only for dogs, but for their humans, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool. So first of all, tell me how you got into this business. Uh, well, it started with my dogs. Um, our first guy, Murphy, has he had allergies to chicken, and I couldn't find treats that had didn't have chicken or chicken byproduct in them. So I instantly thought, you know what, I'm just going to make them. I'm going to make my own, and I'm going to see where it goes. And it kind of just took off from there. Okay, so then you started. Okay, so you started making these treats. Yeah. and then I understand you also carry these food. Uh, meal toppers. Meal toppers. Yeah. Like what, what is that? So they all started out as treats. Um, Murphy specifically has a lot of gut issues and so I wanted to make a treat that was geared towards gut issues and so I made a treat with that and then I realized it's so much easier to sprinkle a topper on their food and not have to worry about it for the rest of the day. So okay. I started creating a line of meal toppers. So we have a gut and urinary, we have a calm for anxiety and reactivity, we have a strength for muscle and joint support and a few others. So what type of products are you putting in there? So with the gut, are you putting probiotics? Yes. Yeah. Tons of probiotics. Okay. Okay, great. And then what other type, like to be able to help with anxiety, let's say, mm -hmm. what type of... It, is it a homeopathic you're putting in? What are you putting in? Yeah, so I focus yeah. a lot on herbs. Um, okay. I'm big on plant medicine and utilizing what we have in nature. So for like the calm per se, I use um, chamomile, lemon balm, ashwagandha, hemp hearts, all these different herbs mm, and nice. ingredients that are known to help calm the nervous system as well as pumpkin and rice to help calm the nervous stomach that tends to go with a nervous mind. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, so all the ingredients kind of work together um, to create a good balance for them. Okay, yeah. that, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, so this has been a pretty cool journey. Yeah. So now you are this entrepreneur and you have this hugely creative mind and I've had some great conversations <laughs> with you. You're like, okay, I wanna do more products for for people as well, you, you right? Yeah. So how has um, this entrepreneurship, I guess, how has it changed your life? How has it impacted you? How, like, huge. What shifts have happened? Honestly, so many. Like, just, I just feel so confident in where I am and who I am as a person now, and everything just feels so aligned. And it's like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is how I'm, I've always known I needed to help people. That was always my goal, was to help in some sort of way. And I think through my education, I was, I was in the wrong helping profession, where now I'm like, I'm able to help pets, which helps their humans because they are feeling better and there's a whole wellness around it. And now I'm just like, how can I help people too? Like mm -hmm. all of these ingredients are all human grade. Everything is natural. Everything is what we put into our own body. And I'm like, this is good for everyone. So it's yeah. just, yeah, it's just an overall wellness that I've just, it just keeps pouring out of me. <laughs> well, I love that because Okay, there's two, a couple of things I wanted to mention. The first one is like as a pet owner myself, I can have stress and guilt and anxiousness when I don't know what I can do for my dog. Yeah. So well, I have two dogs, but even one of them, she licks incessantly. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that some of it is stemming from some anxiousness. Mm -hmm. And then the the other thing is like she itches this time of year she itches 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 so I've been trying probiotics mm -hmm. I've been trying even um, uh, you know like whether you use Benadryl or Aries yeah. I'm giving yeah. like a little bit and I haven't quite found the right type of remedy for her. Yeah. So with you being able to help solve those problems, you're helping to the owners to go. Ah, so yeah. it is a beautiful, so it makes sense for you to start also offering products to help yeah. with that ease and flow. Right, yeah. and to know that it's all natural and it's, it's ingredients that you know that are in your own household and that you know is safe for your pet is yeah. huge for me because I, I would read ingredients and I'm like, 
I don't know any of this. Like, this feels synthetic, and I, I don't like that. I yeah. want everything to be as holistic and natural as possible. I love that. Yeah. Okay, the other thing I want to mention is that because, like you said, I feel so aligned, or it feels so aligned. Mm -hmm. So you followed your inspiration, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like, like the universe will throw us different situations. So you had Murphy yep. that you needed to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And then you had this inspiration to create this and it just led you to the next thing and then led you to the next thing and yep. led you to the next thing. That's divine alignment, it, honestly, right? When you follow that inspiration. If, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have this. Like they, th it is why they are on my logo. It is why the name is Northern Roots. They're both Northern Rescues. It's they are the backbone of the whole business. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, you know, I, I meet a lot of people who are either unhappy with their career, they're yeah. in that stage, or they suddenly their career has been like uh, taken out from under them, and they're in a totally new beginning, yeah. and they can start fresh. And like, I think that's the best piece of advice uh, mm -hmm. that you could give is just, well, what inspires you? Yeah, honestly, right? what, yeah, what is your heart calling for? Like, I, I was in a career for a long time that wasn't aligning with me anymore and I wasn't who I, I, I didn't even recognize myself anymore. And yeah. now I've come full circle and I'm like, this is where I'm meant to be just diving in and letting go of all the worries that of the what ifs and what if it doesn't work out and i'm like what if it does what if it, what does? If it does let's just see yeah. where this goes yeah. okay so if people want to get your products yes. they can go to the whitby farmers market yep. nine until three on yep. wednesdays oxbridge farmers market yep. on sundays nine until two yep. uh where else can they get do you have a website that they can order from where should they right go? right now we also we're up I'm also at the Fenland Falls Farmer's Market okay. from 9 to 2 on Fridays. Okay. Um, and other than that, I'm in Shirley's Country Clutter in Beaverton and Twigs Garden and Co. in Keswick. Hopefully going to expand. Okay. Awesome. So stay tuned. And uh, you can get her products all these places. So thank you so much. We'll be back with more on Oxford Scoop Dog Life. Welcome back to Oxford Scoo God Life. So I have Michelle Hurlbutt, who is the hollow queen of the Canning Cannington Haunted Attraction. I, I feel like we need to have extra sound and stuff going there to make it more spooky. But <laughs> anyways, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I am so excited to have you on the show. I was involved with it last year doing some cool readings. Yes, yeah, and it was a great turnout. Yeah, it was an excellent turnout. And I think more people need to know that this attraction is here and available. How long has it been running for? This is year 16 that we've been running. Okay. 16. And, and I still think there's of, a lot of people that don't know about it. A lot of locals don't know that it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, sorry, my earpiece is just popping out of my ear. I want to make that could be scary. Um, when is it happening this year? So this year is the two Fridays and Saturdays before Halloween, so okay. the 18th, 19th, 25th, and 26th. Okay, so what should people expect? What is it, what is it all about? So our goal is to scare everybody. Okay. Um, so our, our target audience is older youths and adults. Kids are more than welcome, but it is a scary event, so it's definitely, you know, parental discretion if you know that your your kid can handle it or not um, be prepared to be scared to be entertained uh, we have entertainment we have um, actors in the lines we have music going to at least keep people busy while they're waiting for each attraction okay so you can go there's different attractions that you go to while you're there That's right. you yes. walk along uh, yeah. a guided like 
I guess it has. We have two trails. Okay. So two trails through the forest, and each trail is a separate attraction. Okay. So separate themes. And then the final attraction is a barn maze. Okay, mm -hmm. very cool. And with those actors, they're just out and around. They're and out they and might, around. You never know. You never know when they're them. coming. Yeah. Okay, very cool. So I understand you also take volunteers. You need volunteers. We do. We are a volunteer organization. So okay. we run all, everyone's volunteer, even the people that um, are planning and putting everything on. Okay. Um, our main volunteers, we use about a hundred or so high school kids okay. and we do we sign off the sheets for community hours um, but we do also need adults we're looking for more adult scare actors more adults for building okay mm -hmm. okay so let's talk about the building of this this is different every single year every year is different okay so how does that work you come up with a theme you come up with creative ideas exactly. of what you want each uh, each element to look like exactly so we have attraction managers and we're the ones that come up with the main idea Okay. And then we work with other managers and scene managers to kind of plan out each individual scene and make sure that they're built and that they happen. Okay, just so we we still keep this year's a bit of a surprise, can you give us an example of maybe last year, what one of those elements, one of those scenes would have looked like? So last year the barn was amazing. It was a butcher it was a butcher scene, um, the whole barn. So each room in the barn as you're going through the maze, it was a different scene to do with the butcher shop. And it was basically a butcher shop of horrors. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what other type, so in regards to volunteers, we're gonna go back to that. So you could use volunteers for building of it. You could use yeah. volunteers to help as people come to the gate. That's right, yeah, uh, we have a few there, yeah. but we mainly need scare actors. Okay. So we get the kids from the high schools coming out and it's a great time. It's a great way to earn your volunteer hours. You need okay. 40 to graduate. Okay. Um, and we are happy to help with that. Okay, I love mm -hmm. that. What is your favorite thing about being involved with this event? I love Halloween. Um, okay. I'm born on Halloween, so it's kind of you <laughs> a are? thing in our house, our household, yeah. That's amazing. I love, honestly, the nights of just being in the distance and hearing the screams. I love entertaining. I love that everyone is scared and having a great time. Okay, this is very cool. And this is, it is very interesting. Are, would you like to talk about the type of employment, that, what your career is as well? Or do you want to keep that out of it? Sure, no, that's fine. Because it's a very interesting alignment. It is, yes. Okay. I'm a, I'm a funeral director by trade. Okay. Yes. So you are around, um, uh, you are around death in a different way. And you're there from a place of compassion. Yet, this I feel like this is a beautiful, almost like a release for you. It definitely is. Right? Adding yes. that entertainment, that, yeah. that fun into the evolution of life. Exactly. So this is yeah. my fun time away from work. Work is very rewarding, very stressful. Mm -hmm. And um, when I'm away from it at the haunt, it's just... It's my outlet, it's my release, my creativity. Like I, I get to pour everything into it. I love that. And mm. I love how it's your birthday is <laughs> Halloween too. It just yeah, seems so it's kind of in my DNA, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it really seems that way. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. So, um, what is something that you're in particular excitement about for this one? Can you give us any tidbits without ruining any surprise? So I can surprise? give a little bit. We do okay. have the themes on our website now, connectandhaunt.com, okay. so you can go on and you can see what each attraction is. Okay. Gives a little bit, but doesn't give everything away. Okay. Um, this year, I'm my I'm most excited about my opening scene. Oh, I'll leave okay. it at that. So yeah, anyone okay. that has been to the haunt before may remember Jeepers Creepers bus. Okay. We're kind of we're playing, we're kind with, of that. playing with that again. Okay, that sounds good. Different theme, but similar, similar entrance. Okay. Starting with a bang. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that tickets can get sold out. Tickets are so, sold out almost every night. Okay. So okay. we recommend getting them online and getting them in advance. Okay. okay. Can they get tickets right now? Right now they're already selling. Okay. So where yeah. do they go to get those tickets? Canningtonhaunt.com. Okay. You just click on the ticket tab and it takes you right, right to Eventbrite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. Um, now the gates open at what time? Gates open at six. Okay. Six six thirty. Okay. Um, but we wait until dusk before 
before we start letting people into the actual attractions. Okay, and mm -hmm. last year, are you going to have vendors again this yes, year? Yes, we do have the Haunted Market again this year. Okay. Um, if you follow our Facebook page and Instagram, Facebook we're more active, but Instagram as well, we are doing spotlights on every vendor so you know who's there, who's available, and what forms of payment they take. Okay, so do you recommend, so they're not in a big lineup, come early, you get in, and then you can go to the vendors. You can go to the vendors, you can get some, um, some chili, hot dogs, Okay, yeah. so there's even food. You can there's have your dinner food. before yes, you start. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay, that's amazing. So once again, those dates are October 17th. Sorry, 16th, 18th, 19th, 25th, and 26th. Okay, October 18th, 19th, 25th, 26th. Fridays and Saturdays, the two weekends before Halloween. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Great. Thank, Thank you for having me. We'll be back with more on Oxford School Dog Light. Stick around. Hi, my name's Scott Dennis, host of the Sports Report here on Rogers TV Durham. Do you love sports? So do I, and we're talking about it anywhere from the Oshawa Generals to college, university to amateur sport. Make sure you tune in here, only on Rogers TV Durham. Welcome back to Oxford Scoot Dog Life. So for this last segment, it, uh, I decided to call it from um, comedy to confidence. So sir, some of you, I just, some of you know me from some other segments that I've done in the past, but others, this, uh, this might be new information to you. So I, I, have had issues with low self-esteem, with anxiety, and improv, comedy, play, it has made a profound impact on me. So I used to get a lip quiver and an eye twitch if I was put on the spot to introduce myself in front of a group of people. Yet, I was always involved in theater. I go up on stage, I'd you know, learn my script, know my lines, and no problem. I could do what I needed to do, and I loved being on stage. But put me on the spot, that's when I would definitely start freaking out. And improv made uh, a really big impact, impact on me because way back when, so this was mm, a little more than 20 years ago, I started to take some improv classes with Second City. And I was consciously wanting to get over myself. And so I would walk through my fears every time we did a different improv activity because you had to trust that whatever came out of your mouth, you could deal with it. Whatever came out of someone else's mouth, you could deal with that. And so I would give myself uh, these strategies to be able to shift my thoughts, notice my thoughts, shift them. Now, during COVID, I went through another layer of healing, another layer of getting over myself, another layer of releasing old patterns of thoughts that was stressing me out. Uh, so something else about myself, uh, you know, I, I do cards at the beginning of, uh, of the uh, shows. So I'm a psychic medium and I started to notice that I had this gift when I was nine years old. Um, I started to notice some other elements in my 20s and then in my early 30s is when I started to really develop it. Despite me knowing this about myself, I had a lot of fears of judgment, you know, fears of people thinking I was a wackadoodle. Even um, I, I used to be married and even my ex uh, wasn't in a place to fully embrace me. We all have different belief systems, right? So I kept a lot of it under wraps, but during COVID, it gave me an opportunity to open up, to come out of the closet spirituality-wise. So during COVID, I created a character uh, named Madame Euphrosini, goddess of joy. 
So she was inspired during COVID. And I have a, a European, Eastern European heritage. So that's where the accent comes, is from that. I have a Polish background. And even though my accent might sound a little more Russian, but I did get confirmation from someone who's Polish that it actually does sound Polish. It depends on where you're from in Poland. And so I used this character to start live streaming readings. And I, I started doing this on Reddit. And so I would come in character. I actually started doing this character with a wig and I'd wear a different type of glasses. And in this fun character, I would do readings. It was live, so I would have people commentating. And I felt it was a safe space because I felt like, well, I'm in character. It's not, if I get some people saying some nasty things, I can, my character can handle it instead of Jackie being wounded. And so I was doing this and it felt comfortable and it felt more comfortable and more comfortable. And then one day I wanted to be myself. So during one of the live streams, I took off my wig. That's when I was coming out of the closet, I guess. And I was myself. And I, I started to feel safer at being all that I was spirituality wise and then this character as time has gone on this character has helped me to heal on various levels I had a sexual trauma when I was 14 years old and through doing this live streaming and the different interactions that I had my character helped me to heal from my sexual trauma my character has helped me to embrace me on so many different levels. You know, we are all so unique and we, can, we have our quirks. Um, we have our unique sense of humor. And my character has helped me to be able to embrace all of that. And, you know, I'm also um, have been involved with Durham Pride. We have Durham Pride on the show um, every so often. And for me, Pride, it's not just about embracing one's unique, let's say, sexuality or identification. It, to me, it's really about embracing all of who we are. Um, every aspect of our uniqueness and I think it's really important for us to do that so find the outlets that you can embrace all of who you are because who you are is so unique and so incredibly brilliant and I feel like even in the workplace we need to do this more so thank you for watching that's it for the show uh that's it for this segment and next week we're going to be back with more so we're going to have durham tourism come on we're going to have um i'll keep the rest under wraps and you'll just have to watch <laughs> so we'll see you next week with more on expert scoop dog life bye Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com.